For the notes for 9.2, we're first going to do a little pre-page here because our most important part of our parabola is its vertex. And so we should be able to find it easily in this situation where we just have what I would call y equals a x squared, or in this situation where we have y equals a x squared plus c. Because remember, our quadratic functions look like ax squared plus bx plus c. We've been keeping b0 and keeping it out of our quadratic models up until today. And in 9.2, we're going to have the introduction of that b term. And we're going to watch what it does to the graph. But before we do that, let's make sure we really understand what the graphs look like without that b term there. We said that the vertex is at zero, and you'll understand why it's at zero today. Um, and then when we put zero in, negative five times zero squared is zero. So that one goes through zero, zero. Furthermore, we should know it opens down, and we should know it's very narrow, because it's getting stretched to five times its height. So just a rough sketch of it would look like this, opening down because of the negative, very narrow because of the five, vertex at zero, zero. And now the addition of the c term, what does that do to the graph? Well, now when we put in a 0, and we do 2 times 0 squared, which is 0 plus 4, you'll notice that that vertex moved up the y-axis to 0, 4. What does the rest of the graph look like? We could plot points and use some symmetry, um, and you should know how to do that. But we're just discussing what effect these a, b, and c have on the graph. And so we said that that being a 2 is going to cause it to open up. It's positive. It'll make us smile. Because it's a 2, it's going to be narrower than the parent function, but not as narrow as this one. So I'm just going to kind of head it up like that. Those are just rough sketches. But what's more important is that you notice that both of these have a vertex on the y-axis. They both have a vertex at 0 comma something, where that something is where you go up or down on the y-axis. In this next section, we're going to move that vertex off of the y-axis by moving that axis of symmetry. So remember, the axis of symmetry is that splitter. And what we're going to do is we're going to move it off the y-axis, and our vertex is going to be sitting on an axis of symmetry that's been shifted left or right, but basically off of the y-axis. The effect of A and C are still rock solid. They, again, A determines whether we open up or down. C moves it, the vertex up and down its axis of symmetry. But B is actually just going to shift that axis off of being on the line y, x equals 0, or being off of the y-axis. So let's go talk about that. Our essential question on this one is going to basically be how do we graph when that middle term, which we call b, is not equal to 0. So we're going to be looking at what effect that b has on the graph. Well, it's actually just a formula, and it's a formula that you won't understand where it comes from until you get to a much higher level of math. And so for now, you've just got to memorize it. The axis of symmetry gets moved according to these two values. And the formula for finding where it moves is to do negative b, the opposite of the middle term, over twice a, or twice the lead term. Keep in mind when b is 0, that ends up being 0. So that makes sense why when we didn't have that b term there, we were always sitting at 0 comma something. We had that vertex living on the y-axis because the y-axis is the line x equals 0, which is what happens when b is 0. Well, the vertex lives on the axis of symmetry. So let's pretend here, just so you can see what I mean with all these numbers. Let's pretend that that was y equals, and let's just say it was 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. That no longer has a vertex sitting at 0 comma something. It no longer has an axis of symmetry at x equals 0. What we, it does is it shifts. And this formula says we do the opposite of b. So in this one, we do opposite of 4 over twice a, which would be a 4. What this is going to do is shift the axis of symmetry to the line x equals negative 1. It's going to shift it over. 
And so our vertex lives on the axis of symmetry. So what I know about my vertex is it's somewhere on here. It's got an x value of negative 1. So what this is saying is the x-coordinate of your vertex is what you got for your axis of symmetry. It'd be at negative 1 comma something. And we'll worry about the y-intercept in just a second. But repetition is good for things that need to be memorized. So we should write this four times. All right, to get the axis of symmetry. And again, once we have the axis of symmetry, we know the x-coordinate of the vertex. We do x equals opposite of b divided by twice a. What do we do? x equals opposite of b divided by twice a. x equals negative b divided by twice a. x equals negative b divided by twice a. That needs to be memorized, and it's really important that you put that x equals there because it is a line. It's a vertical line where if you got negative b over twice a maybe being 4, your axis of symmetry is this line where x equals 4, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3 is on the line. So make sure you write x equals for your axis of symmetry. The vertex lives on your axis of symmetry. It's somewhere on here. Where is it? That's, on the that's what we're going to do on the next page. But what you do know is that its x-coordinate is what you got for the axis of symmetry. If we got x equals 4, then my vertex is at 4 comma something. So it's at negative b over 2a comma. We're going to need to figure out how to find that. Where's the vertex? It's at the opposite of b over twice a comma. We're going to have to find that y value. So basically on this page, you really need to get negative b over twice a. So let's go do a problem here. What is the graph of this function? We are going to graph it, but we're going to walk our way to it. First of all, identify your a, b, and c. a, because you don't see it, but x squared is there, is a 1. b is the negative 6. It's what's in front of the x term. And c is a 4 in this situation. How do I find the axis of symmetry? I say x is equal to the opposite of b, which would be a negative, negative 6, or the opposite of negative 6, which is 6 over twice a, where a was 1. So it's 6 divided by 2, or 3. My axis of symmetry is the line x equals 3. I'm going to go put that on the graph right now before I even do anything else. My axis of symmetry is what splits my parabola into two equal pieces, and I know the vertex lives on it. It's the line x equals 3. So next step. What are the coordinates of the vertex? Well, the vertex lives on the axis of symmetry. So it's at 3, comma, and it's this right here. How do we find that? We'll go back up to the equation. That's the y value of the point. And this gives you what all the y values are. It says y is equal to, so we're going to go write that, y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 4. And you're going to find what the y value is at the vertex location. So what you're going to do is you need to put a 3 in right here and a 3 in right here. So it's going to be 3 squared, which is 9, minus 6 times 3, which would be 18, plus 4. So I basically need to do 9 minus 18, negative 9, plus 4, which is negative 5. So to get that y value, to get y, you plug x into the function. All right, so I know now that not only is my axis of symmetry x equals 3, I know the vertex, which is located on it, is at 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, negative 5, so I'm going to go graph that. The problem is, is although my vertex is at 3, negative 5, I need some other points because I don't know. I do know from the equation, by the way, that it's going to open up. Why do I know that? Because it led in a positive. But what I don't know is where to put some other points so I can connect them. Well, the easiest point to find is, again, in our equation, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 4. 
x can be any number in the world. To graph it, I need the vertex, but after that, I just need some more points, and I can let x be anything. What's the easiest number in the world to plug into any equation or function model? And that's a zero. Really what that represents on the graph, when x is zero, it means you don't move anywhere left or right. It means you're somewhere on this y-axis. So we call it the y-intercept. And that's the easiest point to find, is just stick a zero into the function because this will go and this will go, and you just get that four, which is actually the c value. So note the y-intercept is just at zero c. That's kind of easy. So I know my parabola hits at zero, one, two, three, four. Well, technically, I don't even really need another point. You could go find one, but I'm not going to make it because here's why. I know it opens up because it led in the positive. I know it's a vertex, and I know it's y-intercept. So if I use some symmetry here, if this is 3 to the left of my axis of symmetry, then when I go 3 to the right, I'll get another point on the parabola. So I can get a really good idea what the sketch of that looks like with just the vertex and the y-intercept. The only time you can't do that is if um, the y-intercept actually ends up being the vertex. Then you do have to find some other point. Well, I put a 1 in, because that's the easiest point in the world to plot. So let's go to the next page and try this one more time. Hopefully I'll have enough time for it. So here we go. In order to graph it, I need that axis of symmetry first. It's the line x equals negative b over twice a. This is b, so I do the opposite of 4. Negative 1 is an A, so I do twice negative 1. I get negative 4 over negative 2, which is 2. All right, so that's my axis of symmetry. I immediately am going to go put that on my graph. This is my splitter, my axis of symmetry. It's a line. It's the line where x equals 2. Well, what I know is my vertex lives on there. So I need the vertex because that's kind of the control point of the entire parabola. So it's its turning point. I need to know that. Well, the vertex lives on the axis of symmetry. So it has an x of 2 that gets to just be dumped in. How do I find the y value? If you were listening on the previous page, we take that x and we plug it in. We say the y is equal to the opposite of x squared plus 4 times x minus 2. This is the model for the function. So I'm going to put in a 2 for x. Now you've got to be really careful with your order of operations. I square this first. It's not a negative 2 that I'm squaring. It's a positive 2, which when squared gives me a 4, but there's an opposite out front. Plus 8 minus 2. That's going to give me um, 4 minus 2, which is 2. So my vertex is at 2 comma 2. So I know it's this point on the axis of symmetry, 2 comma 2. Well, one other point, and I'll know what that looks like. And again, the domain is all real numbers. Any number can go into the function. I need the vertex to graph it, but I can get any other point that I want. However, the easiest number in the world to plug into any function is 0. And when I plug a 0 in to, again, it's y equals negative x squared, plus 4x minus 2, right? When I plug a 0 into that, this goes and this goes, and it gives, gives me a nice, easy 0, negative 2. Then for my other point, I'm actually just going to use some symmetry to reflect it over the line of symmetry. And I could say 4, negative 2 if I wanted to, but symmetrically it's on my graph. Now it shouldn't surprise you that this is opening down. Why is that? Because A was negative. Right? It's, not, it's neither fat nor skinny. It's got that average kind of width to it, and it's because that lead number was a negative 1. All right, so I think that's all I have time for on this video, and that was the end of day 1.